what we can take guys who've been trained to have these sorts of missions and give them a completely different mission that they will embrace because that's who these guys are. But the same fervor. And honestly, you know, from the marine conservation side of the equation, we're talking about an ecosystem that is one of the most critically endangered on the planet. And unless you're a diver or a marine conservationist or a marine biologist, you probably don't know that because it exists under the water, sort of out of sight, out of mind. And as we say in our, you know, sort of our, our tagline description that you referenced at the beginning of the program, we've got these warriors who need a cause, right? We all know the statistics right. that 22 of our vets are killing themselves every day. A lot of us, you know, untrained sort of observers think that that's probably because of what they've experienced, what they've seen, what they've done. And yeah, that is a component. But a lot, particularly for a, a lot of it, particularly for our special operations community, isn't so much what they've seen and done. It's not having a mission now. They come back, they feel, you know, useless. They feel like the, the training that they have is not applicable. And suddenly, you know, they're despondent. Depression sets in. If there are PTS issues, they're exacerbated. And, and we're trying to curb that. And the feeling is that if we can get these guys operating like they used to, and give them the training, give them the education. We can do wonders for them, but we can also do wonders for, on the environmental side. Because if you think about it, people who would never pay attention anymore, particularly in as partisan a world as we live in now, to yet another scientist talking about the science behind what's happening to our, our oceans, Somebody would never tune into that, or would just blow past it if they heard it on a radio program, they saw it on television, they read about it on the internet. As soon as we involve the Special Forces community, you're going to have an audience go, oh, Special Forces guys, Green Berets, Navy SEALs. Let me, let me think about that. Let me consider it in a way that these people who I hold up as heroes are talking about. So it's a, it's a real mm -hmm. opportunity for us to reach an audience with the message of conservation that, that we couldn't before. So I think we like to think of it as a win-win for everyone. Help help the vets, help the planet, you know, and everybody wins. Absolutely. And Jim, you mentioned it earlier, coral reefs are the most diverse of all marine ecosystems. Tell us a little more about the coral reef and the state that it's in in 2017. Well, you know, I am not by, by trade a marine scientist, so I, I, you know, certainly like Vlad Akins, who is our curriculum director who um, heads an organization called Reef.org, uh, is the real expert on that. But I can tell you this, that every year, and this is was a surprising statistic to me, coral reefs are responsible for $375 billion worth of revenue, right? And that comes from tourism, it comes from fisheries, it comes from communities that surround it and depend on it, it comes from medicines that are being discovered. It is a second only to the rainforest. It is um, where, where, you know, our oxygen comes from. It, it is a crucial, crucial element to sustainability as a planet. And um, people don't realize that. And, you know, I've had you know, scientists who I've talked to said, for instance, if there's going to be a cure for Alzheimer's in our life, in my lifetime, it's probably going to come from research conducted on reefs because that's where more and more new medicines are coming from. And uh, again, unless you really, you know, because you can't see it. I mean, I always tell the anecdote that when my children, who are now 22 and 18, were, were little kids, they would yell at me if I used too much paper in the printer. They would mm. say that, you know, you're killing a rainforest. Right. Because the rainforest, you know, the rainforest did a, a much better job. People supporting rainforest uh, preservation did a much better job of communicating um, the threat. And you can see a tree. You can understand the concept of that. A coral reef, you know, a lot of people think they're, they're just rocks or they're, they're just plants. And in fact, it's an entire independent community of organisms very similar to... Um, any city, any community that we all live in. And, and it just, you know, you need to think of it in those terms. And for our guys, that's a really great way to educate them because they've spent, you know, as I say, over a decade of their lives, many of them, whether it's Afghanistan or Iraq 
or, or doing contract work in other places, protecting communities, right, mm -hmm. from the bad guys. Right. That's what they do. So when you put it in that context for them and you say this is an independent community that is incredibly resilient, however, is facing amazing threats. You know, I, for instance, 60% of the world's coral reefs right now are dead or in decline. And there's a statistic I read the other day that by, if, if things are not changed, if we don't do something to reverse what is happening to them, we could see 100% of the coral reefs in the world disappear by 20, I think it's 2030 or 20.